Hello everyone and welcome to a personal video essay of mine. I have prepared a short slideshow for your viewing. I am going to do this in one take and to be honest, I do have a lot to say about this topic. It is a issue that I would consider myself to be fairly passionate about, but more important than passion, I am I feel as if I am highly highly knowledgeable. And so I, with that being said, I am going to try and keep things concise. If you check the time remaining on this video, it should hopefully be like 20 to 30 minutes maybe. But at the end of the day, this is a very important topic to myself and to others. So I will be treating it with the respect that it deserves. This essay was created originally in response to people that I've been conversing with. I have expressed my attraction towards Sandy Cheeks in the past and... To be completely honest, I was met with unjust and harsh backlash. Later in the presentation, you will see we talk about opposing viewpoints, just to sort of give everyone a fair shot in the conversation, but you will see that their opinions stood absolutely zero fucking chance against my wit and intelligence on this particular subject. It was absolutely a r slash liberals getting own moment. Most people... I feel would consider themselves truth seekers. I would consider myself one as well. And to be completely honest, I have uh, I come with the facts. Um, that being said, I have reviewed YouTube's terms of service. I just wanted to make sure that I could express my love and sexual fantasies regarding Sandy without violating any rules. If there is someone at YouTube who is manually reviewing this, I want you to know that I have done my research about Sandy. This is highly, highly, highly educational content. I mean, absolutely no malice. Um, and although I will be spewing a lot sort of just off the top of my head, I will make sure that all my comments stay within TOS. And listen, I know you're going to be forced to watch the entire thing just to make sure that I hold true to my word. But... If you are going to watch the entire thing, I do hope that you learn something. At the end of the day, this is an online lecture, and I hope you can sort of sit back and escape reality for a second. Maybe just take in some, some good information. Um, we are going to go ahead and head to slide one. I would like to make note that all slides will be publicly available to every person in order, in the, like in the exact order that they are shown here today. They will be publicly available to everyone for free via a link in the description. This is sort of just in case you would like to reference something later or maybe you can follow along. Uh, similar to how libraries will have copies of, you know, historical texts and artifacts for, for the general public to access, I, I feel as if it's my responsibility to make this available for everyone as well. Um, we are going to go over some introductory points, uh, sort of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, with that said, I do highly encourage you all to take notes. Um, I just feel, you know, taking notes, it's been proven, you know, something like you, when you're, when you're writing things down, you retain information better, but, uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's a lecture. So sit back and, uh, get ready to learn. And we're going to put our thinking caps on. Um, obviously educational content is very time consuming to make. Um, I doubt this will be monetized mainly because we're going to be talking about how I want to fuck a squirrel, but, you know, it is important to say thank you. I would like to say thank you to the kind people who are, quite frankly, funding free education for the masses. Um, I will talk about it later, but if you are interested in keeping me not homeless, I, I would appreciate it if you consider clicking the join button below and seeing our channel perks. But uh, that being said, I haven't educated quite yet. I will, I will earn your membership if you choose. But yeah, this video is not scripted. We will have some talking points, however. And this video lecture is being uploaded in its entirety due to the generosity of our channel members. Who are the channel members? Here's their fucking names. These are the, the legends themselves. These are the current channel members. Thank you for allowing me to eat food and drink beverages. I truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the substantial amount of perks. And we will get into tier-specific shoutouts sometime later. But... Let's get into the lesson. This is a brief summary of what we are going to be talking about in today's lecture. Just, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. We will be talking about 
what attraction is, what makes a good mate, why bestiality is okay, and we're going to be going over some example scenarios, we're going to be sort of, uh, the example scenarios, kind of pros and cons, you know, giving s certain situations where maybe having a squirrel girlfriend would be better than a human female, um, we're going to be talking about why she's hot, obviously, and then we are going to go over some questions that um, I think some of you all may have. So we're going to do a quick Q&A. What is attraction? This is going to be the beginning of the lecture. Le lecture. I'm sorry. I'm fucking retarded. This is going to be the beginning of the lecture. So let's go ahead and get into it. What is attraction? This is sort of when I, I would recommend getting some notes and uh, whether you want to do it sort of online. I know how the, the youngins like to be nowadays if you want to get your little notepad up. Or you can go old school, pen and paper, something like that. What is attraction? So, there are two types of attraction. You have platonic attraction and you have sexual attraction. Now, I'm sure the majority of you already know the differences between these two. But it is still important to get the differences up. That way it can sort of be established in our brains before moving on. Platonic attraction is a type of love that involves no sexual desire, uh, which in this case would be the incorrect form of attraction that we're going to be talking about because we do want to actually fuck Sandy. Um, you're drawn to a person. You might think of them as attractive, but you have no desire to act on those thoughts. On the contrary, you have sexual attraction. Sexual attraction is similar to platonic attraction, except you actually want to engage with your sexual desires which is what we will be talking about in this case because, again, we actually want to have sex with Sandy Cheeks. You will have natural attraction to someone who you deem to be a good mate. Now, this might seem like common sense, but it is important to sort of go through some of these specifics, okay? We need to make clear that in this particular context, we are not talking about platonic attraction. We are talking about sexual attraction. If, say, say you are in high school or you're in college, or maybe you meet a girl at work, you you sort of see the woman, okay? Your, your DNA in your male body, by default, if you see an attractive woman, there are things that are going to happen that are usually tied to sexual attraction. Maybe you will develop a crush. That is a part of a, a type of attraction. You think a girl is pretty, uh, yada, yada, yada. You can think all that bullshit, but at the end of the day, you are attracted to someone who you deem as a good mate which can be a widespread of things, right? Obviously, men can be attracted to a large, large variety of, of women and creatures. But why are we attracted to people at the end of the day? It's because you, you deem them to be a good mate. This is way, this is just, that's just in our DNA. It's how people are designed with women. It tends to be the same way. You are attracted to someone who you deem to be a good mate. We're going to be talking in the male to female context. So uh, someone who would make a good mother. So, what are the signs of a good mate? Like I said, in the context of a male looking for a female. Kindness. Uh, one of the biggest signs of a good mate, being kind. Um, here we can see being kind, helpful, indulgent, considerate, or humane to others boosts your serotonin and the serotonin of those around you. It's been proven that kind people are seen as more attractive to the opposite sex. So, being kind to somebody. You can see this picture over here. She's looking very kind. She's looking very grateful for something. Um, but, yeah, I mean, throughout the show, Sandy is seen being overly helpful and kind. She's always giving SpongeBob a hand with things, uh, whether it's inventing something or helping him with karate or just lending an ear. Sandy is shown being incredibly, incredibly helpful and kind. This... <laughs> second, I mean... Come on, a nice ass, a nice ass at the end of the day. Uh, I know that might seem kind of like a harsh switch, but we need to get out of fairy tale land here, I feel like. Um, of course, being helpful, kind personality, but physical attraction coincides with the sexual attraction we were, we were just discussing. So a nice ass. Uh, scientists say men find narrow hips and a large buttocks to be uh, so attractive uh, in women. The reason that it's so attractive is because of their underlying skeletal morphology. These are subconscious signs that she'd be able to have a relatively easy childbirth. So, I mean, that's sort of just the logistics of why men like a nice ass, but 
I mean, come on. Come on. You know what I mean? You, you can get science. You can get that mumbo jumbo science shit at uh, all you want. You, you, can, you can get as scientific as you'd like. And like I said, this is sort of an educational lecture. So that's kind of why I, I'm staying with the science. I'm here to educate and inform you. But I mean, <laughs> guys, come, come the fuck on. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need science to acknowledge that you want to tap that shit. You know what I'm saying? Science, at the end of the day, science is not that important. Uh, anyone with eyes. Okay, no, yeah, we'll, we'll stop. This, I think I for I don't think I, uh, I think that's an accident. I don't think that one was supposed to be in there. Confidence and risk-taking behaviors. This is reason number three as to what makes a good mate. Science has shown that men find it especially attractive when a woman is ready to accompany them and enjoy an adventures and trips together. Women who enjoy physical activities allow men to, to gain a sense of masculinity throughout the show. Um, oh, skipped ahead here. Skipped ahead. I'm so sorry you had to see that. Uh, <laughs> again, gaining a sense of masculinity throughout the show. Sandy Cheeks, she participates in karate. Um, she does all sorts of things. She's an inventor. She's a scientist. She uh, participates in karate, martial arts. That is something absolutely that is that a male and female could do together. That is sort of a, it could be a bonding experience, something like that. And I mean, come on, what bitch in 2022 do you know who is a scientist, an inventor, who can sing, who can also do martial arts? You're not going to be able to name a single bitch that can do all those things. At the end of the day, women are. They're so far below, it's not even fair. It's not even fair. And I, I'm so sick of debating with people who think that it's weird that I fantasize about a squirrel. And I'm sick of debating people who think that it's gross that I want to to date and marry a squirrel. But I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it, and I, I've come with the facts. There's not a single woman in 2022 that even comes close to what Sandy Cheeks can do. You can see here, ripped, shredded. Okay, right here, ready to beat some fucking ass. All right, the motherhood instinct. This is reason number four as to what makes a good mate. I don't you like again these pictures. Interesting. Um, Sandy is seen acting very, very motherly throughout the show. This is known to just drive men wild. Obviously, it is ingrained into your DNA. Um, to you know, I mean, there's a reason. There's a reason when you're when you're dating somebody. And you see something that they're doing that's a little bit motherly. It makes you it makes you go wild. Obviously, you know it's it's ingrained into your DNA to want to procreate and to find a good mate. And I mean, yeah, men are designed like here. I, I wasn't even reading off this, but men are designed by default to prioritize procreation over everything else. So seeing an attractive woman demonstrate these traits only accelerates feelings of sexual desire. Um, yeah, I mean that that really that I mean. That, that perfectly sums it up, to be completely honest. Um, yeah, she's incredibly motherly throughout the show. And, I mean, it's one of the millions of reasons, man. It's one of the millions of reasons. Those are just a few good traits that make a good mate. At the end of the day, everything is subjective. Um, but if none of those traits, what, what, what do I mean by that? I mean, everything is subjective. You could think one of those things makes a good mate. You could think others do not make a good mate. Everything is subjective. You might think a good mate is someone who could cook and could clean, et cetera, et cetera. So there are particular things that are objective or subjective, I mean. And actually, I don't know which one's which. I don't really care. The, the difference between them, though, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Think whatever you want. Think whatever the fuck you want. If you think Sandy makes a good mate, Whatever. If that, that's why you want to be attracted to Sandy, you can be attracted to Sandy because you think she makes a good mate. It doesn't make a difference to me at the end of the day, does it? What you can't deny is that. Tell me she's not the baddest bitch on the face of the fucking earth. And quite frankly, if you tell me that she is not a 10 out of 10 dime piece, I'm going to spit in your fucking face. I'm going to spit in your face and I'm going to curb stomp you right into the fucking ground. Because I, you're lying. You're lying. Let's address the elephant in the room. Let's address the elephant in the room. Because I know what some of you all might be thinking. I, 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 know, I know. I know. Sandy is technically not a human female. Like that fucking matters. But 
uh, that is that is one of the main arguments that I have been uh, forced to hear from Sandy haters and Sandy deniers. Uh, oh, you want to fuck a squirrel? Oh, she's not even she's not even a human woman. Yada 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 yada. Like I give a fuck. Number one. But let's go ahead and debunk that. Zoophilia and or bestiality. Zoophilia is a paraphilia involving a sexual fixation on non-human animals. Bestiality is cross-species sexual activity between humans and non-human animals. Now that we've got some definitions, let's read a case study from the National Library of Medicine. Now, this study was done by a bunch of fucking... Uh, I, I cannot pronounce their names. I'm not even going to give it a chance. But the title of the study is as follows. An Adolescent with Bestiality Behavior, Psychological Evaluation, and Community Health Concerns. These are the authors. Like I said, not even going to give it a try. I'm going to read this entire article for you all now. And I want you to notice. I, I, want, you to, I want you to listen. I want you to listen to the full article. And I want you to tell me if anything sticks out. And if it doesn't, it's okay. I know a lot of you are kind of fucking stupid. That's why I had to make this video to begin with. Um, but we'll see if anything sticks out. And if not, the next slide, we'll, we'll kind of go over it. Abstract. Bestiality is a serious but less commonly reported form of animal cruelty occurring in a society. It is a punishable sexual offense in India. Bestiality has received little attention in recent psychiatric literature. And even though case reports have been published, an elaborate psychological assessment is often missing. This case report of an 18-year-old male presented here highlighted the importance of psychological assessment to emphasize on its implications for the further risk assessment of the person, family, psychoeducation, and non-pharmacological intervention for bestialists. Ugh, I mean, that's it's, it's describing me, but I still can't pronounce that. The overall assessment suggested of absence of any brain dysfunction and active psychopathology, average intelligence, and intact cognitive functioning. The findings portrayed physical and sexual inadequacies, emotional and sexual immaturity, difficulty in emotional attachment, internalized hostility, uh, voyeuristic tendencies, and infantile social behavior. Ex uh, he was an excitement seeker, the inability to delay, inability to delay uh, gratification of impulses, lacks empathy, poor self-discipline, less consciousness, and less sensitive to criticism. The report also emphasized the role of child sexual abuse on sexual behavior later life, the importance of including the topic within the community health slash sexual and reproductive health education programs was highlighted. Now, I apologize if I read that quick, but it was a whole lot of bullshit for the most part, but there is something that I do want to highlight. Now, what did we learn from page one of that report? The overall assessment suggested, look, it says it right there, no brain dysfunction. They did not find signs of any brain dysfunction. No brain dysfunction. And active psychopathology. He has average intelligence and, and intact cognitive functioning. This means that guy who fucked a dog. It, science has proved. Science has just proved that he is normal. Intact brain function. Active psychopathology. Average intelligence and intact cognitive function, bitch. Do you hear me now, slut? Do you understand what I'm saying? You fat, fucking, stupid, fucking whore. Puh. All these haters saying, oh, Dylan, you can't fuck that squirrel. Oh, Dylan, that's weird. You probably don't have intact cognitive brain function. You probably have inactive psychopathology. You probably have below average intelligence and brain dysfunction. Look, bitch. Look at that, slut. So what do we learn? People who want to fuck animals are normal and okay. People who fuck want to fuck animals are normal and okay. I made this presentation literally earlier tonight, okay? If you're going to comment on that typo, kill yourself. This is Sandy Cheeks, as you can see. Come on. What do we learn from that report? Are we on the same page now? Are we on the same page? Collectively, society has decided what is good and what is bad. Wake up from the fucking matrix. Waking up from the matrix is crucial to self-independence. Don't let the media control you. If the media comes up, hey, you, you can't fuck dogs. 
Oh, me? Yes, but I can fuck dogs. But, uh, what? Stop! G believe the Matrix. Wake up! Wake up. There are bugs in your skin. Wake up. Wake up. There are spiders under your skin, and your veins are the cobwebs. Get up and get them out. Leave the matrix. Open your third eye. Somebody puts a fucking phone screen in front of you. Oh, oh, oh. You can't fuck dogs. Oh, oh. You can't stick your dick in that rabbit, Dylan. Who are you to tell me I can't, bitch? Who do you think that you are to me? Exactly. Which pill do you want to take? Do you want to take... The one, the Skittle flavor one? Do you want to take the red one? Or do you want to take the one that, the Tylenol? It's up to you. Here's why bestiality is okay. And this is one of my favorite quotes. Uh, obviously, I mean, we did, just, we went over why bestiality is okay. But here, let's, so let's top it off. Let's top it off. Psycholog uh, psychologist, <clears throat> I apologize, one take in this shit. Psychologist Jonathan Hitzel Snorg had a famous quote. All living creatures... Are equal and you know what let's let's cut out the bottom part for a second let's cut out the bottom part would you say that all living creatures are equal would you I know most animal rights activists they would say that right they would say oh pet pets are friends they're not food and I would agree I would agree entirely I would completely agree I'm still gonna have a hamburger I'm gonna have multiple hamburgers to be completely honest I had, I had chicken just earlier today Fuck that chicken. I don't give a fuck. I, I would have, I would, I would have, actually, I would have stuck my dick in that chicken if it, the chicken was near me. All living creatures are equal. I agree with that. I'm no better than a fruit fly. I am no better than a cow on a pasture. So, just as you'd fuck a woman that you met at the bar, why not find a partner at the dog park? It's, it's only logical. It's only logical. All right? Okay, okay. But even if bestiality is not your thing, you need to accept the facts. Sandy Cheeks holds the same physical traits as any other woman. Any other woman. She's got a working vagina. She's got ears. She's got a lot of physical traits. She's got a lot of physical traits. She's been humanized, okay? And the only difference between her and a normal woman is that there, there have only been... She she has she holds the same physical traits as any other woman, yet adds additional characteristics not found in human females. Take a normal human female, and then you make it better. Why would you go for the inferior product? That's what I don't understand. Why would you go for the inferior product? Okay? Imagine the following scenario. I want you to imagine this. You're in bed. You're cold. You're freezing. You can only cuddle up with one of the following women. Which one are you going to cuddle up with? Hmm? Hmm? Which one? Which one? You want this stupid bitch? She didn't have fur. She didn't have fur. She couldn't keep you at, uh, above uh, an acceptable temperature. Compare that to her. Large, cuddly, cozy, warm, fur. Look at that. Who are you picking? Who are you picking? I know who you're picking. How about another scenario? Your family will be murdered violently if a pickle jar handed to you can't be opened in less than five seconds. Who are you picking? Who are you picking? This weak bitch? This weak fucking bitch? Look at her scrawny arms. She couldn't fucking open a pickle jar. What's she gonna do? Your whole family's... Boom! 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 Your little brother's crying. Ah! Wah! Dead. Mom. Father. Throat. Slit. Ugh. Dead. No. You're going to pick the fucking, you're going to pick this. You're going to pick her. You're going to pick Sandy. Look, at she's fucking ripped. Uh, ripped. she got the fucking guns, bitch. I'm sick of it. Some things just make sense. But, but, now that, now that we've gotten sort of the, the quick stuff out of the way, I would like to, to actually talk about Sandy Cheeks' physical appearance. And this, I have a feeling, you know, I might go on for a little while here, and you will have to excuse me for doing that. At the end of the day, though, like I said, this is a topic I'm, I'm pretty passionate about, but I'm done justifying it. We've talked about why bestiality is okay. I've given you some good scenarios. We've presented a lot of facts, and uh, 
Okay. I want to stick my cock in her furry little mouth. You know? And I know that that might be a little bit... That was a little jarring. It was definitely an interesting way to, to introduce this, this new segment. But I'm not going to sit here and lie to you all. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you all. One thing that is rather common during oral activities is the grabbing of the hair. And with her fur, I... I would imagine it just to be all the better. She's just so small and warm and cuddly. She's also got that little flower on the top of her bowl. It kind of, it actually just drives me wild. Um, and I feel as if I could talk for hours about why I want to fuck this squirrel. And I think we could really get into the nitty gritty as to why she's hot to me now. You know, physical appearance is one side of it to me. But what's also important is her, her personality as well. Sandy is incredibly talented. She has an amazing singing voice. You've probably heard her song about missing Texas, which is interesting to say the least because there are a series of tornadoes going around Texas right now, which is fine. You know, if her and I were in a room, there'd be a lot of blowing as well. If you know what I'm fucking talking about, you know, I, and I am not talking about the wind. All right. Uh, but on top of singing, she also partakes in martial arts, which is huge. You know, if, uh, if someone were to run up on me, if someone were to run up on me, hypothetically, and I were to have left the strap at home, having a bitch that can kick some ass is definitely an absolute win. Uh, on top of this, she's a scientist, and she's an inventor. She's got the brains and the beauty and the bronze. But what I'm saying is that our babies would be smart and beautiful. But uh, we have to have actual conversations uh, here. And one point that people like to bring up is the the bowl, the the glass dome around her slutty little face. A lot of haters will bring up the fact that, oh, maybe you wouldn't be able to fuck her outside of her home because of the bowl on her face. Uh, obviously, the bowl is on her face to prevent her, I, I guess, from drowning in Bikini Bottom, you know. But, it, to, you know, it, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. But in an ideal world... She would just be on land, you know? Well, I I mean, if, if it was an ideal world, she'd be tied up in my bedroom, kind of leg spread situation. But the bowl actually, and I'll talk about it, the bowl, I kind of see it as an absolute win. Um, you can get a lot of infections if, say, my body fluids, for example, were to make their way into her beautiful and tranquil eyes. So the bowl, you know, first of all, everything below the bowl is, is fair game in its entirety. You know what I mean? And the bowl, you know, it's even decorated. It's like with the pink flower. You know, it's it's like she was made for me. Uh, she's decorated her cum shield. And to make matters even worse, you know, most of these images, they will, most of the images that have her glass bowl, they have like the white reflection on them, which you can kind of see, you can kind of see it right here, which let me just say, there there have been many nights where, where that white in that reflection has been, substituted in my mind as a particular fluid, you know, but, uh, again, she only has to wear the bowl underwater, and if I had her, she would, she would rarely be outside of, of our home, let alone our bedroom, so let's move on, head to toe, head to toe here, Sandy is a complete goddess, um, yeah, I mean, what else is there to say, this image actually, it, it sexually frustrates me, you can see she's kind of being a tease about this. Uh, it's kind of like an upskirt uh, position here. Her her breasts her breasts are positioned very nicely in this photo, and and she's letting the dogs fly. You know what I mean? She is letting the dogs fly. This is absolutely one of the highest tier photos in my personal Sandy Cheeks collection. Uh, I will often put my nose up to it and sniff as hard as possible. But this image, it also, you know, it makes her tail stick out nicely, you know. I don't think there's a single man who wouldn't want to uh, get up under there, you know what I'm saying. She's just perfect. She's she's really just perfect. And I, I, I don't know how it's hard to see. Uh, her nose is perfectly symmetrical along with her ears. Uh, I mean, I, I have more photos prepared. I have, I have more photos prepared. This is... Um, this is another one of my photos that, that's pretty high up on my, my personal list. Uh, you can see her smile on this one. Uh, you can see the smile. It's it's very very nice. I will I will often imagine the the package that you can see in her hands. 
I will often imagine this package being my own genitalia. Um, you can see she's got a very firm grasp on it. Even with her little space suit or whatever the outfit is, I would imagine the friction that that would cause, it would still be quite pleasurable at the end of the day. And so I, I will often substitute that package for my own genitals. And that brings me immense, 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 immense pleasure. Um, I think this photo also highlights her eyelashes as well, you know. It's just another perfect thing to add to the list. Her genetics are just perfect, you know. There's not a single blemish or imperfection. And it makes me want to impregnate her very often, very often. I will very frequently imagine the procreation process and the results of it. Uh, having sort of like a, a harem of, of squirrels is a is a lifelong dream of mine. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that word correctly. I just know it means kind of having like your, your own personal slut collection. So I'm going to pronounce it harem. And uh, if it's wrong, I don't really care. But uh, God, dude, I just want to rip these clothes off. The zipper is like literally right there in the middle. At least I believe that's the zipper. Uh, it's just right in the middle of her slutty fucking clothes and the boots as well. Jesus Christ. I want to drink the sweat out of them, actually. I want her to step on me. I want this squirrel to step on me. And I'm going to be completely honest. Like, while we're, while I feel, I feel like this is kind of a safe space now at this point, I, I would have this squirrel pinned against every inch of her big glass dome house. And when SpongeBob and Patrick showed up to take Sandy somewhere or to check on her, her house would look as if it was covered in mayonnaise. Uh, the glass walls would be painted white. That's all I have to say. We'll move on to the next slide. Um, this one, I feel as if these images kind of show, they showed the duality, they showed the dynamic. Um, on the left here, you can clearly see Sandy when she is very large. She is ripped. She is angry. She is dominant, powerful, decisive. And then on the right, you can see the she she you can see she's very small. She's very submissive, very obedient. So, with a dynamic this strong, you know, get you a bitch who can do both. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much at the end of the day, whether you consider yourself dominant or submissive, you're good to go. Uh, there's no going wrong with with sandy cheeks. And the amount of times I've ejaculated to the image on the right, like to this particular image, the amount of times that I've ejaculated to it, it's actually astronomical. The The number is, is simply just gargantuan. And if we compare that to the amount of times that I've ejaculated to other SpongeBob characters, you can see that there is a clear winner. This is a, this is a graph that I've made specifically for this uh, slideshow. Uh, you can very clearly see, you can see clear as day right here. Sandy is the only one in the prestigious 1,000 plus nuts club. Um, I mean, if you look below, uh, we can kind of run through these. You have your Pearls and your Garys in the 500 plus. You know, we see Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, yada, 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 yada. But there is a very, very, very distinctive reason that Sandy is the only one in the 1,000 plus club. But, but... Um, I, I, we have to move on and I feel we, we have to do something. We have to do something that is very, very important. Um, I would like to sort of preemptively answer questions that some of you all may have. Uh, I wish I could have done this live. I feel like that would have been a lot of fun if we could have actually done this live. But the problem with that is... Okay, I wish we could have done this live and, and I do enjoy streaming very frequently here on YouTube. But I was sort of worried about zoophobic trolls coming in and shitting on my sexual preferences and my sexual fantasies, which really sucks. I mean, it is it does suck because I would love to do a Q&A about these things. Um, but luckily, luckily, don't be sad. There will be I, I will be able to answer your questions in, in the comment section below. But with that being said, uh, these are some questions that I have a feeling that some of you all may ask. And I just kind of want to catch them. I want to catch them ahead of time. That way, we can leave the comment section to, you know, we can leave it to only the good shit. Uh, intellectuals only kind of club down there. Uh, do you feel shame for wanting to fuck a squirrel? The answer to this is simple, simply a no. Simply a no. Why would I? Why would I? I've yet to hear a valid argument from the opposing side as to why I would even need to feel shame. 
We've previously just established that Sandy Cheeks is a complete goddess head to toe. It's just nothing. There's no imperfections on her. Um, I mean, so what? What? She does everything a woman can do, and she does it 100 times better. Why would I feel any shame at all? That's a ridiculous question. What is the hottest physical feature of Sandy? That's a great question. Really everything, to be completely honest. Um, I, I love the decorated cum shield. She's got very, very nice breasts, uh, thighs, everything. She's got some for everyone. The elbows. Uh, everything is perfectly symmetrical and, and perfect. Uh, I'm a big fan of the tail as well. So that's that's a really that's a very subjective question. Uh, I think everybody in the community will will have a different answer. But that is a good question. It's very fair. Uh, it's up to you. I mean, what do you guys think the hottest physical feature of Sandy is? What would you do to Sandy? The answer to that question is uh, is everything. Um, I think the better question that you could have asked is what won't you do to Sandy? Um, and I think the only answer to that question would be let her leave or or let her go ever. She would be trapped uh, 24-7. Are you worried about her, her fur getting sticky? This is a good question as well. This is a good question. But yes... I am, but they can also, you can clean squirrels. Um, that's a very natural question. That's a very good question. And that would be a problem. That would be a problem after the the 13th to 14th ejaculation of the day. And absolutely, I mean, there's nowhere else, you know. You could kind of, I guess you could have her sort of sort of swallow or something like that. But that that is not always going to be going to be possible. Surely there will be, you know, 10 or 11... Uh, times when when finishing and swallowing is, is the play throughout a day but the other 14 times throughout the day at least in sort of my imaginary like my dream schedule so like you know the the 13 to 14 times it's going to be on the fur and if you let that build up and corrode you are eventually going to have a squirrel that is just rock solid uh just be similar to some type of uh some type of rock you know and You'd have to like get a chisel and shit to fucking crack and then and, and get it out. So it it's very important. We would have to I say we, no, she'd be mine. I would have to clean Sandy quite frequently. Um but that's all right. That's all right. That's that's sort of the responsibility of 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 having your own personal sex squirrel, you know? And that's a responsibility that I'm willing to take, and that's a responsibility that I, I feel is is quite necessary. Um, so yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good question though. Do you think your attraction to a make believe creature is weird? Uh, the simple answer to that. No, no, I don't. I don't. Um, have you seen anime bitches? Have you seen people that watch hentai? Have you seen really just anime viewers in general? They are much fucking weirder than me. I, if I, if I watched anime, I would be disgusted with myself. I'd actually, like, I'd be disgusted. Watching, like, little cartoon people go around in make-believe land. Some foreign, like, fucking cartoon show with little cartoon girls. That's disgusting. Uh, people who watch anime are a thousand times worse than people who want to fuck a dog occasionally. Um, that's my own personal take. But even if you see sort of zoo files and, and, and people who watch anime is kind of one and the same... <laughs> Uh, at the end of the day, you know, in a, I get, there's almost a similarity. You know, you want to fuck cartoons, you want to fuck make believe creatures. So there's a there's a comparison to be made. But yeah, so if you think what I'm trying to say, I guess is if you think that me wanting to fuck Sandy is weird, but then you think people who watch hentai aren't doing anything bad, then you're a complete hypocrite and you're wrong. Uh, so yeah. Of course, they 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 are they are not the same, but they are also very similar in some ways. Uh, and if you think one is bad but the other is good, you're retarded. Uh, do you think that you could fuck the squirrel? This is a, another great question. This is a great question, and it is a fair question as well. Yes, the answer is yes. I feel as if uh, lubrication would be required, and I do feel as if it would be a lengthy process. Um, at the end of the day, you know. Not only do I think that I could fuck the squirrel, I think that I could fuck the squirrel well and hard and 
it would be very rambunctious. I, I feel as if I could get a lot done, I would be able to live out sort of my most private and illustrious sexual fantasies. Uh, yeah, squirrels, they have... Uh, what, what's the word I want to use? What's the word I want to use? They have holes, you know? Orifices, I think, is, is, is the word. Orifices. Orifices. They've got holes. I can fuck a squirrel. They've got an asshole and they've got a mouth. That's what I'm trying to fucking say. I don't need to be all fancy schmancy over here. I can fuck her little slutty mouth. It's not a big deal. Yes, I could fuck the squirrel. If that's really what you're asking. I could fuck the squirrel. I could impregnate the squirrel. Okay? Is that what we're, is that what we're trying to fuck? Is that what you want to fucking know? Yes. I could do that. That was the end of the Q&A section. With that being said, however, with that being said, uh, we're going to sit up here. Feel free to ask more questions in the comment section below. I will be answering and responding to a majority of comments. I, I feel like it would be very, very fun to, to sit back and read your comments and to answer them respectfully. Um, I know a lot of people might be coming to this video a little bit curious about my opinions or they just, they, whether you need advice or you just have a gen, genuine question from an outsider's perspective, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And absolutely feel free to engage in the comment section with myself and other zoo files. And we will, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. I feel like it would be great to start open discussions down there. And I'm open to all questions. Keep As long as they are respectful and they do not shame me for wanting to have sex with an imaginary squirrel, then I, I think we're good. But, so yeah, feel free to ask more comments in the comment section. Now, I know, I know, this is a little bit sad. I, I feel as if we really have uh, simply only scratched the surface. You know, we have just scratched the surface here, to be completely honest. Um, and actually, I, was, I feel like I was just kind of getting started. But I don't want to overwhelm anyone's brain with too much information at once. So we are going to wrap it up here. We are going to wrap it up here. Um, in conclusion, Sandy Cheeks is the hottest woman alive. I want to impregnate her and have a harem, 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 harem of squirrels. I want to have a little fucking constant orgy. That's what I want. I want five to ten little fucking squirrels similar to Sandy on me at all times. Okay? That's what I want. That's what I want. Um, that that sounds like the fucking dream, you know? Sort of just nonstop squirrel to human sexual intercourse. Uh, bestiality is all right, and science proves it. We have discussed that. So next time somebody comes up to you and says, hey, you can't fuck that dog. You're not allowed to fuck that dog. Or maybe you're trying to hit on some fine ass, uh, some fine ass Labradoodle. Maybe you're trying to hit on a dime piece German Shepherd at, at a dog park, and someone's like, hey, Come on, what do you what do you lack brain dysfunction? You know, what do you what do, what do you is your cognitive function not intact? Are are you of lower intelligence? You can show them that study that we talked about. Be like, hey, bitch, fuck you, fuck you, dumb slut. Look at this scientific report, bitch. So, bestiality is all right, and science proves it. Our feelings are natural. Listen, guys, listen, listen. If you want to fuck Sandy, there's nothing to be ashamed about. There's nothing to be ashamed about. I'm so sick and tired of of societal pressure weighing down on zoophile shoulders, making them feel guilty and not included with, with the others. That's so messed up. That is so messed up. Uh, your feelings are natural, guys. Sandy is a goddess. I feel as if that's quite self-explanatory, you know? And last but not least, I want to stick my dick in, in her furry little mouth. I, I really, really do. So uh, I would like to say thank you all for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this quick lecture. Uh, it is my goal at the end of the day to spread knowledge and truth throughout the public domain. So I hope that I could actually educate you all here today. Uh, again, this presentation was was paid for and funded by my amazing channel members. If you guys would like to learn more about various cartoon animals and the sexual desires that I have for them, please do consider becoming a member. There are a uh, there's a ton of cool perks and it helps greatly. You know. Uh, I'm going to be frank with you guys. I was recently kicked out of my home for sexually assaulting a rabbit. And and every little bit counts, guys. Every little bit counts. I am currently making a whole video on Sandy Cheeks for my members right now. It'll be members only. It'll be up uh, the same day this video goes out. Um, but 
thank you guys. Seriously, thank you. I hope that you guys could learn something here today. Uh, have a great rest of your week, and I will see you all again soon. Most people would consider themselves to be truth seekers, and I would consider myself one as well. But, um, yeah. And, uh, fuck! 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 <clears throat> Take three! <claps> Gotta make noise. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> oh, fuck. To make this available for everyone, um, we're gonna go over some introductory points, sort of what we will. Uh, fuck. Did I stutter? I think I stuttered. This is absolutely going to be an r slash liberals getting owned moment. Most people would consider themselves to be- Oh, fuck. Already messed it up. I'm just gonna run it again. I do have a lot to say about this topic. I would consider myself to be fairly passionate about this issue. Um, fairly passionate. I already fucked it up. Hello, everyone. Uh, <coughs> Hello, every Hello, everyone, and welcome to a personal video essay of mine. I have prepared a prepared, prepared. Hello, every that it deserves. This essay is really just in response to people that I've been conversing with. Fuck, fuck, doing. I'm gonna go ahead and do this just in one clean take and fuck and bitch. One clean take, my fucking ass. And now we thank the channel members, Revine, Solvec, Arenanen, Moped, I Can't Sing, Shinny, yeah, woo! Last Resort, Retard, Noble Job, Nick, Denied, Respiteful, Tokyo Did It, and Terry, Hashed, Jimmy CS, Broa, and Jerry. These are the first world member tiers, and then that's also the la the top secret tier member as well. But they're really, really rich, so they already get head. Ah, ba -da -ba -da. This has been the video. Ba -la -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -da.